Hello and welcome back to Linear Algebra. In today's part 9, we will talk about the inner product and the norm in the vector space Rn. More precisely, we will talk about the standard inner product and the standard norm. However, before we start, I really want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady, via PayPal or by other means. And as a supporter, you find the PDF versions and quizzes for all the videos. Now, the question for today is, what does it mean that we have an inner product and a norm on the vector space Rn? Here, please recall, at the moment we only know how to scale vectors in Rn and how to add them. This is the whole linear structure a vector space like Rn has. Therefore, if we want to have more structure on it, we need new objects like an inner product or a norm. So this is what you can immediately remember, an inner product and a norm give more structure to a vector space. And if you recall part 3 in the series, you already know this is what we have discussed in the case of the plane, in the case of R2. In fact, there we have seen, after defining these objects, we were able to do geometry, which means we could measure angles and lengths. And there you immediately see this is way more than just a linear structure on Rn. So now maybe you can imagine that we have two vectors u and v in the space. And then by having an inner product it's possible for us to define this angle alpha here. Now you might already have an idea what this angle here should mean. And that's because you know the standard geometry in R2 or R3. In fact, it's not the only possible one, but it's the one we should start talking about. And this leads us to the first definition of today. This will be the standard inner product in Rn. The motivation for it we have already seen in part 3 in the plane in the vector space R2. And now it's no problem at all to generalize this to the vector space Rn. So what we do is that we take two vectors u and v in our vector space and then we define a real number denoted with these pointed brackets here. So this is something you can immediately remember. Such a construction here always denotes a scalar. In fact, this is the reason we don't use a dot for denoting the inner product because in this way it's much easier to recognize scalars. Okay, but now to the definition. You recall from the third part for R2 that we have u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2. So you see, here we have the first two components of the vectors u and v. However, now we could have more components and therefore we have to add all these products then. So the last one would be un times vn. And there we have it. This is the definition of the standard inner product in Rn. In short, we simply have the sum starting with i is equal to 1 going to n. And then we can just write ui times vi. Hence, the standard inner product of two vectors gives us a scalar. Moreover, we also know that orthogonality of two vectors is related to this number. More concretely, in the case that the inner product of u and v is exactly zero, we say that the two vectors u and v are orthogonal. In other words, perpendicular vectors are characterized by the inner product. In fact, with this definition we get the usual geometry of R2 and R3. So this geometry is something you might already know very well, but now we can generalize it to Rn. So even to higher dimensions than just 2 and 3. Moreover, I can already tell you that later we will also consider other geometries. For example, if we consider more abstract vector spaces, we can also consider more abstract geometries on them. In fact, we could also consider strange geometries on Rn. Indeed, this will be not so hard because we only need an abstraction for the inner product. And in order to do this, we need to talk about the crucial properties of this inner product here. And essentially, we have exactly three. Now, the first thing you have to note is that the inner product defines a map. 
And this map has two inputs given as vectors from Rn and the output is a real number. So usually we just denote the map by the pointed brackets where we use dots for the inputs. And now this map that is defined by the sum above has three properties. First, it's easy to see if we put the same vector left and right, we cannot get out a negative number. This is simply because we sum up squares in this case. Therefore, this property holds for all vectors u in Rn. Moreover, we also know what happens when we have the equality sign here. If this inner product is zero, this happens if and only if the vector u is the zero vector. This property is what we also immediately see when we look at the squares given in the sum. Moreover, now both things here together is a property we call positive definite. It tells us that we are always positive except for the zero vector. Okay, then let's go to the next property we call symmetry. And as the name suggests, it means that the order in the inner product does not matter. So more precisely, uv is the same as vu. And of course, this equality should hold for all vectors u and v in Rn. Of course, for our standard inner product here, this is not hard to see, because the multiplication here in R is commutative. Okay, then I would say, let's go to the third property. And this one we find very often, it's the linearity of the map. More precisely, we need to say that the map is linear in the second argument. In other words, we can pull out the addition sign and the scalar from the second argument. Now, this is an important property we will talk a lot about in the upcoming videos in linear algebra. So maybe not so surprising, linearity has something to do with our structure of the vector space, namely the addition and the scalar multiplication. Now, in this case, we have that the inner product of u with v plus w is equal to the inner product u with v plus the inner product u with w. So this is what I mean when I say we can pull out the addition sign. However, please note here, this on the left hand side is the addition of vectors and here we have the addition of two real numbers. Now, in a similar way, we can pull out the scalar lambda here which means it's lambda times the inner product of u with v. Okay, now of course, these two equalities should hold for all vectors u, v and w in Rn and all scalars lambda in R. Okay, now one important thing you should remember is that we have formulated this property here in the second argument. However, this pulling out of the addition and the scalar multiplication also holds in the first argument. However, we don't have to formulate it because it follows immediately from 3 when we combine it with 2. In other words, the symmetry gives us this linearity in both arguments. In summary, these are the important properties of our standard inner product. And indeed, this helps us to measure angles like we have seen in the orthogonality. In addition, it also allows us to measure lengths. And this leads us to the next definition, the definition of a norm. And indeed, this is what we can do for any vector u in Rn. In fact, the notation for this you already know from part 3, we use double lines around u. And then we can use the inner product u with u because we know it's non-negative. And then, if we do the square root of this number, we get back the usual Euclidean length in R2 or R3. So you see, this is a straightforward generalization of this length. In other words, we have the components of u squared, added, and then taking the square root of the number. For example, in R2, you know this formula when you talk about the Pythagorean theorem. However, now here in general, for vector u, we call this the standard norm of u in Rn. And sometimes it's also called the Euclidean norm. Hence, this is what you can immediately remember, 
we use a norm to measure a length. Now, this is important because we will generalize the notion of a norm in later videos. We will see that as for an inner product, we can do this in a completely abstract way. However, before we do this, I would say, let's first look at some concrete examples. For example, we could look at vectors in R4. Here, u should be the vector 1, 0, 0, 1. And v can be the vector 0, 2, 0, 0. Now, the first thing you should note here is that the inner product of u with v is clearly 0. So we say, in R4, these two vectors are orthogonal. Therefore, if we would visualize them, we could do it with a right angle. Moreover, in this picture, we should also respect the different lengths the vectors could have. In the sense, we need to know the norm of u and v. In fact, this is not so complicated, we just have to take the square root here of 1 squared plus 1 squared, which is simply the square root of 2. On the other hand, the norm of v is even simpler to calculate. We just have the square root of 2 squared, which is obviously just 2. In other words, v is longer than u. Okay, so now you see, even in such higher dimensional spaces like R4, we are able to talk about lengths of vectors. So such abstractions like this one really help us to generalize concepts. Indeed, this is what we will do throughout the course. However, before we do that in more detail, I want to tell you about another product we have in R3. So this is a very special product and we will consider this in the next video. Therefore, I really hope that I see you there. Have a nice day and bye.